Hello guys and uh, welcome back to another bonus episode of uh, Crusader Kings 2 The Old Gods Norwegian Campaign. Uh, so in this episode or part or whatever you want to call it, I am going to continue showing off the different clips that I have recorded over the last couple of days of basically what happened after the Let's Play officially ended. And uh, then I believe that the last uh, part of these bonus episodes or whatever you want to call them uh, is basically just going to be going through the world one last time, showing off some stuff I feel like is worth showing off, and uh, talking a little bit my plans for Europa Universalis 4 and that kind of stuff. So why don't we just get started? Okay, uh, so the clip you're seeing right here is... Um, yeah, it's just me fighting against uh, the Golden Horde, that's right. And this is me pressing the victory button. Uh, I, did I show this in the last episode? Or didn't I, did I not? Anyways, I don't remember perfectly and I should probably have checked. But if I show this in the last episode, then sorry. But point point is, I just won the war against the Golden Horde and I took control over all the land within the Kingdom of Ruthenia that the, um, that the Golden Horde still control. And uh, here I'm just looking through my vassal for some reason. Uh, but now uh, we get on to sort of my plan for this uh, newly conquered kingdom of mine. And that is uh, the fact that I want to give it away to um, to another person. Because, first of all, because I'm, I'm feeling lazy and I, don't, and I don't want to give away all these titles by myself. I just want someone... I, I, I would prefer someone else to do it. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. Uh, and I, that's basically possible by just giving it away. And here's just me trying. I'm, I'm, I was, I was, I wanted to usurp the title of Kingdom of Ruthenia, but I couldn't do it. I had to make sure that this woman here stopped her wars. I need to assassinate this random dude here, which I succeeded with after a while, a couple of tries, anyways. Uh, but uh, the main reason, of course, um, that I do this is because I don't want to become too powerful because I am already quite powerful, and if I would grow any more powerful now, then um, Playing Europe in Versailles 3 is going to be far too easy, I think. So that's the reason. I have explained that a billion times by now, though, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Here I'm just cycling through my brothers and other relatives to see, um, see who would make a good king for uh, the kingdom of Ruthenia. Although I believe it gets renamed to, to something else, or I am sure that it gets renamed to something else. Uh, I think it's Kunungardr, which. Um, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of some Norwegian words, but it isn't... It is Norse and not Norwegian, to put it like that. Kunung is kind of similar to Konge, which is the Norwegian word for king. And Gardr, that's kind of like, um... I don't know. Um... Oh man, I had, I had like a good example here, but I can't come up with it. Kunung Gardr, yeah. Point is, um... It is basically just a Norse name for the, um... Kingdom of Ruthenia, which is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, I wish there was more kind of stuff like this. So, for example, I wish that Finland got a different name if you uh, gave it to a Norseman. But you can see that the Kingdom of Kunungardr have been established, and uh, the Orthodox faith is now getting its la one of its last uh, death blows, if, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's now the the main um, power in uh, of who still embrace the Orthodox faith is um, is you know pretty much destroyed and they're replaced by a Norse dude. So that's pretty cool. And you can see that I have um, I have Kunungadr as my ally because we're the same dynasty. Because I gave it to I believe it was one of my brothers. I'm not perfectly sure. Um, and here's a pretty hilarious thing: the Golden Horde converts. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm showing off this war. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's the thing. I mentioned earlier that, would, that I was allied to the Kunigadr, and this is sort of one of the reasons why I wanted to be allied, so that I could sort of help them out in establishing themselves properly. And here is just, uh, yeah, I believe this is just another one, another crusade against uh, Norway, where I solved the little crusade problem by simply, um, you know, invading the Pope. But shit, why didn't I show off the whole um, the conversion that happened in the Golden Horde? Uh, because the conversion that happened over there is actually extremely hilarious. So, um, okay, it's not maybe not that hilarious, but it is quite unique. I've never seen anything like that happen before. Usually they convert to like Islam or something. Um, so this will be uh, quite interesting to show off. So yeah, this is just me 
destroying Rome. So that's pretty. That's something. The crusade has ended, uh, or it failed, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so that worked out. Uh, yeah. I don't. Th yeah, here's just another random civil war that I, for some reason, decided to show off. Um. Yeah. <laughs> There weren't actually that many crusades or uh, civil wars after this point though, so it's kind of why I don't show them off anymore. Here you can by the way see that the Kunun guys has sort of uh, cleaned up its borders a little bit by doing a bunch of holy wars. And you can also see that there was a sacking of Nov Novgorod, which is interesting. And there's just a um, a little message telling, uh, telling us about the travels of Marco Polo. It doesn't really impact the game in any way, it's just, it's just there. Now you can see that the conversion is coming along nicely, both culturally and religiously. Mainly religiously, but still. The Golden Horde is still doing very strong, and here's what I was talking about earlier. Just look, to, look at the religion. Monothelite, a orthodox heresy, was the religion that they decided to convert to. That's absolutely hilarious, if you would ask me. Because that's like, I don't know. Out of all the religions to convert to, that's the one they wanted. Here you can see that I'm just doing another one of those great holy wars. Uh, mainly because I'm just trying to do exactly the same that I did in Kunugad. I want to establish another Norse kingdom. Just to weaken the Golden Horde a little bit. And because I don't really have anything else to do. And I thought, I, w I, I came up with sort of the idea that I wanted to have a, a, at least a few more Norse kingdoms throughout the world. Uh, before I um, converted the game to Europe in Rosales 3. Simply because I... Um, I didn't want to be the only Norse power in the world. I thought it would. I thought it would be a little bit more interesting if there were more than one Norse power. I think by the end of the game, I was able to properly establish um, three three powers. That is not me, and here's just me, sort of being happy about my heir, who became a great eminence and has awesome perks. So his um, or traits, I should say, which makes him a good potential heir to my throne. The Kingdom of Rus, that's the title that I'm trying to claim here. And, uh, oh, I can already enforce my demands. Okay, sweet. And there we go. Um, this is kind of interesting, though. You can see that rather than giving me the kingdom, it gave the kingdom to Kunungardr. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, that, is actually, that little situation is actually going to solve itself, simply because it's... Um, uh, Kunungardr has Gavalka in succession, and as a result, the kingdoms will be split once uh, the current ruler of Kunungardr dies. So, uh, that's either a positive thing or negative thing. I kind of... I, I haven't really decided yet, because the whole splitting of the kingdoms caused some serious instability, and it was kind of annoying for me, because I constantly had to go in and sort of fix their problems for them. And you can see that the kingdoms, as I mentioned earlier, they have split into Gardariki and Kunungardr. Garadariki, that's pretty cool. Garadariki. I don't know why it took me so long to try and learn how to pronounce that. Of course, I'm not sure that is how you pronounce it, but still. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, so here's me just giving money, it seems, to my to the new Norse kingdoms. God knows why I'm trying to do that. Um, this is just me showing off the whole the fact that the Polish culture has sort of made an interesting turn. Like, it, the traditional era er, areas of Poland has sort of been conquered first by the Russians, and then by the Mongols, and then by the Norsemen, and so on. So you can see the, the Polish culture has sort of shifted towards the area that traditionally was known as Bohemia. And I found that to be kind of fascinating, to say the least. Um, I really was a big fan of that, and I tried to fix it later on. Or I, I didn't try to fix it, I tried to like... Uh, I, I shouldn't talk about this now, I should talk about that when I actually get to the point. <laughs> Here's once again just me showing off my awesome ear and the fact that he's a genius and that I'm trying to marry into another genius to produce awesome genius babies. That didn't really work out though. Work out though. Work out? Fuck, how do you pronounce that? Whatever, you get the idea. It didn't really work out and I... Well, I kind of failed with the whole um, genius baby production concept, but uh, it's, it's fine. And I believe I was killed there. I can like the resolution of my screen isn't good enough for me to be able to see perfectly what happened there, but I died anyways. Now I'm playing as the uh, genius, King Genius the no, second. I know that's not his name, but you get the idea. So, so yeah. Um, so at this point, I was really hoping for a, a genius son, but you know that didn't actually work. Here you can see something funny: a successful crusade for Greece, uh, and Leon won that. So now. Um, this is sort of the beginning of the end for the Byzantine Empire. After this, I mean, the Byzantines were never really able to recover from that, and you can see that already the Byzantines are starting to get split up. And there's just once again me showing off the fact that um, 
Did I already show off that Denmark was a teacher kingdom? Oh, I guess I didn't. I don't even know. Point is, the De Jure Kingdom of Norway is spreading, and here you can see the third invasion wave from the Mongols. The Timurids, Khan Timur the uh, something, I can't read, um, of House Timurid is now coming in. He's, although he's already, he's Shia if I'm not completely mistaken, so it's pretty interesting. And that's gonna pretty much mean the death of the Sunnis. Because, um, and uh, here you just uh, see that I did another holy war for uh, Gardariki because the Golden Horde invaded uh, Gardariki and conquered a bunch of their stuff and I did really um, accept that so I uh, decided to um, fix it and uh, this is a while after, after the I have reclaimed Gardariki and then I, uh, and you can see a bunch of these other states um, they have decided to revolt from the Mongols and as a result I decided I was going to try and you know kill them I guess and conquer them and, and stuff. Although, to be honest, uh, my original plan was not actually to conquer them. My original plan was to uh, establish a, um, a third uh, Norse kingdom uh, of Lithuania. I wanted to sort of give Lithuania to someone um, to someone Norse, basically. Although, you'll see later on that that you know, didn't really work out very well. So, oh well. Um, so, but I mean, you can't have everything. So here you go, this is what I'm talking about. I conquered this place and uh, that basically ended the civil war because I believe he was the leader of the independence war or whatever so that's basically just ended the war which was kind of dumb but and it's just me being frustrated over the fact that um, Kurnungardr is no longer in control uh, is or Kurnungardr is no longer controlled by someone of House Greenforce this is someone something I of course cannot accept so I decided to declare war and to press uh, one of my own kinsmen's um, um, claims on the throne. And this is, here you can see by the way that Germany has become, or that Poland has been conquered by Germany, was, which is something that I strongly dislike. And then you can see that I just pressed the claim and now the House Green Force is back in power. Which is nice, I guess. You can see the dynasty map, you can see for example that the Carlings now rule in Lyon, that's pretty interesting. Um, so here I'm getting called into a war against the Timurids, which is quite bad. Um, the Timurids are... Uh, are b <laughs> oh shit, I got something in my... <coughs> Sorry for that. Point is, the Timurids, uh, they basically um, are one of the last nations in our, on, on the map right now that can truly challenge me. So this war here was actually quite challenging to win. Although I was able to pull it off in the end, so... Things worked out. Things worked out. Um, so yeah, I was actually having yeah. Here's just me conquering this little uh, this little county here, and that's just OCD. You know, I I just I couldn't handle it being like I I wanted to clean up the borders basically. So that was my excuse for conquering that. Uh, and here you can see that pretty much all the coastline or the northern coastline or whatever has been conquered by Norway, and that's pretty cool to look at. And a lot of it hasn't been done by me. So here you can see I am. Um, you know, I failed my little experiment with uh, trying to establish Lithuania, so here I decided to try and establish the Ums Vikings because I was afraid that if they, if they had as little land as they have, you know, in the game right now, then I was afraid that they uh, might not be represented on the because the the regions in Europe Universalis are a lot bigger, so I was afraid they might not be represented in Europe Universalis if I didn't give them some decent land to have. Um, so this is just me giving away land in uh, Lithuania. Although I will go ahead and give away a lot more land to the Jums Vikings after a while, though. Although that'll that'll come around later on. Here we go. Just showing off some more hilarious stuff. The fact that uh, the Kingdom of Bavaria is still a thing, but for some reason they have decided to become a vassal of the Golden Horde, which is like very 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 weird, because the the Golden Horde at this point is pretty much just really nothing. Uh, and the, the Bavaria could easily defeat the Golden Horde because they are a lot stronger. And here you can see the there's become a Khan of um, of Germany, which is like what, like what? And he's monothelite. So something has happened here that is related to the Mongols, but I have no idea what that's all about. So here you can see something kind of funny though. You can see that my uh, my vassals had a little crusade of their own and. Um, I guess one of them decided to go into the Holy Lands. Uh, more accurately, that would be the Duchy of Holstein, I believe. At least I showed off that right there. And here you can see um, my um, that I, for some reason, decided to invade the Papal States. 
and conquer them. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I was getting bored at this point, so I was just doing a lot of random stuff for the lulls. And just to make it even more funny, I decided to give away the land to the Yums Vikings. So now the grand city of Rome is controlled by the Yums Vikings. So, so that's some alternative history for you. And there we go. <laughs> so, uh, so that happened. Okay. Um, yeah. Ran a little war there, and I was too lazy to bring my men back, which caused some losses, but oh uh, well. And here's just me doing uh, a, another one of those great holy wars of mine, but this time I decided to invade the Kingdom of Poland. Uh, the original plan here was to invade the kingdom and then give it back to the Polish people. Uh, the simple reason for that was the fact that I... Because um, I, I really liked the way that the Polish had sort of, you know, sort of shifted their culture from their original homeland to sort of the Bohemian area, or like the area traditionally known as Bohemia. So I thought that was kind of funny and I sort of I wanted to make sure that that stayed that way. Um, because I really liked the way the Kingdom of Poland looked before, so I wanted to revive it if you want. So here's just me, uh, accepting the peace offer from the King of Germany. And uh, there we go, victory! I now control all of uh, Poland, or at least Poland in this game. Pretty much all of it anyways. But here's the funny part, I at this point this was just searching around the world to see if I could find someone who uh, wanted to be King of Poland. But no one wanted to be King of Poland, it seems, although of course they didn't know that the reason why I invited them, them to my court was to give them the Kingdom of Poland. That's kind of a silly thing that you cannot, you know, strictly speaking, you should kind of be, it should be possible to, or it shouldn't be possible, I don't know why I'm saying it is, but, you know, it's kind of silly the fact that you cannot just tell, that, you know, the guys reject to come to your court when your intentions are to give them the Kingdom. So I sort of gave up, gave up on that idea and I decided to instead, why not just give all the land to the Yums Vikings? To sort of create a powerful um, Holy Order state, kind of like the Teutonic Order in um, in um, Europa Universalis. Or the Livonian Order, I think that's an order too. A bunch of orders, I don't know, I don't... Keep, I know Teutonic Order is one of them at least, so... That, that, one, you can, uh, that one can be guaranteed, so that's something. Here's just me, I fabricated a claim on that one little region that they originally held, and I basically conquered it. And that's simply because I, I don't know, I wanted to sort of, I wanted to force them to relocate their capital into sort of the newly conquered territory, or the new new territory of Poland. But of course the Yums Vikings were too retarded to do that, so <laughs> they decided to relocate it over to Lithuania instead. And, uh, I don't know why I'm, yeah here we go, the, I believe I'm currently looking at the Kaiser of the, um... The Kaiser of the Golden Horde, which is kind of hilarious. You can see, you can see Germany was conquered by the Golden Horde. And Bavaria sort of, I don't know what happened to Bavaria. A bunch of their territory got conquered. Uh, last off there, you could see the fact that I have I had given uh, independence to Finland. Although, I will talk more about the whole independence thing. I gave independence to a bunch of states. I want to talk more about that and other stuff in, uh, in the next bonus episode. So, uh, and, uh, so, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching this bonus episode of Crusader Kings 2, the Ogans, uh, the Norwegian campaign. And until the next bonus episode, or any other episode of whatever that I decide to make, bye.